Phoenix Mermaid. But the Phoenix, one of the aspects of the Phoenix phenomenon is this is this deal, is this strange horn blast like a trumpet from the sky. Another one is mass vanishings of people. And I've given the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin and other inst instances in Europe where during Phoenix years, all of a sudden, ma masses of people disappeared. And whole villages were found, food still on the table, shoes were still under the table where people were. People were biologically, physically just abducted, gone. Whole communities vanished. And it's always somewhere where, like in the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries, always somewhere where people from the postal routes or mail routes or visitors wouldn't find out for four or five days. Isolated areas, but the whole villages were gone. Now, uh, Jacques Vallée, Charles Ford, many, many of the great pioneers of this type of research 100 years ago, they, uh, they recorded a lot of this. I'm not going to get into it now, but one of the things about the Phoenix phenomenon is, first of all, to answer the first question on the vapor canopy, we only have one instance in the historical record of the vapor canopy occurring, and it's the reason why there is so much mystery and so much confusion about what happened in the 4th and 3rd millennium BC. This period of time, 1656 years, which I've showed in my latest video I've released today, is encoded in the Great Pyramid many times over, and in other videos I've showed it's encoded in the Great Pyramid. But this period of 1656 years is mentioned in the Bible. It is the period of time from the supposed beginning of the new heavens and new earth, which was a pole shift, a phoenix cataclysm, and the period of time between until the next time the world was destroyed which was the Great Flood. And when I say Great Flood, for those of you, for those of you who are very well read and you're very learned on, these, on Bronze Age antiquities and all that, don't be offended. I only say these things because this is what the popular, this is what the populace understands these terms to be. To me, it wasn't a Great Flood. There was flooding, but the only place that really flooded was the Mediterranean. And we, now, we have now located and identified by subsurface interface radar over 305 cities that are below the Mediterranean today. The Mediterranean used to be a series of freshwater lakes, beautiful timber valleys, a lot of pines, and the last vestiges of that mighty forest are in Lebanon, and in the Old Testament they were called the Cedars of Lebanon. And these are what the Phoenicians built great ships out of, but originally the Mediterranean was not there. And this is why Hagar Kim and so many different ancient ruins on Malta show the evidence of a massive tsunami that just came from, from uh, west to east and just blew all these giant 22 ton blocks hundreds of feet splayed them out like shotgun blast it's because a wall of water traveling 400 miles and having having pressure behind it of an entire ocean it's a, it, it was probably pretty pretty bad those people never saw it coming the, the only evidence they saw of the flood in the Mediterranean which created the Mediterranean and the and the Black Sea basically in one day was that in the distance they saw that the birds were panicking and taking flight because nothing on ground survived. Now, and by the time you can see birds in the distance, you're looking, you're, you're looking at five to 10 miles. There's no way. Anything traveling three to four, a wall of water traveling three to 400 miles an hour. Sky. That was the great flood. The great, now, the Phoenix fallout for 2239 BC, which was the 1656 year, that was, that was, that was horrific. And it was probably uh, worldwide, if not hemispheric. And again, for those of you, you have to understand, I have to be very careful about how I describe things. When I say hemispheric, don't be offended. I understand many of my listeners are flat earthers. I understand many of my listeners think flat earthers are morons and, and can't, can't, and can't, that you're just not attached to reality. Is that I am not going to stand in the middle in between those arguments because I am a simulationist. And as a simulationist, I know that the stellar sphere is a hologram. And I know by virtue of my studies in the physics constants and world history itself that everything everything around us is completely simulated. I predict future events based upon the protocols that I have identified that are operable within this simulation. I have no I have no it's not even a mystery to me anymore that everything around me is simulated, that I'm surrounded by NPCs that I know for a fact now aren't even real humans. And I've even done experiments in that, and I've released that in other videos.